I went to Drake's Atoll Blur Tour, and here's how it went. I want to preface this by saying that I'm a massive Drake fan, so this is not like an objective review of the show or anything like that. But I had a great time, and I haven't seen anyone talk about their experience going to the Drake show. What I will say is, despite how big of a Drake fan I was, I somehow walked out of that show a bigger Drake fan. If you're not a fan of Drake, I'm not here to change your mind. So it was at the Crypto Arena in downtown Los Angeles, formerly known as the Staples Center. I've only been to this venue one other time, but I've never been for like a concert or anything like that. So I was really excited. I am always late for everything, so I get there super early. I didn't know that there was gonna be an opener and I'm curious to know if the opener is different at every show or it's different at some shows but the opener for the LA show was Sexy Red who came out probably 30 minutes before the show actually started she came out did like a 10 15 minute set and then there was a DJ and then there was like some silence and then Drake came out Sexy wasn't given much to work with there were no lights on the stage she had some background dancers and she did the absolute best she could of what she had it was a pretty fun 15 minute set after the waiting lights go down Drake comes up walking out with LeBron and already on stage there is a child actor playing him on a couch and I don't know where the rumors came from that child Drake was a hologram but he is not a hologram I don't know why people thought that it's a real human actor child Drake opens with a song that he's reading out of his notebook the kid descends into the stage the stage is like this block with LEDs lining the top that has like depth to it then Drake gets started with the first quarter of the show and the show is broken up into like four major blocks Drake has a large catalog and I was curious to know how it was going to be arranged was it going to be arranged by genre? Was it going to be arranged by era, basically? I think it is hard to figure out how to put all that together, but they did a really good job. And the first segment was kind of like the slower songs and like older songs. So there were some newer songs that were a little bit slower and there were some older songs that were like a little bit more energy, but like that opening block was kind of just like a nice lead in. After that, there's another narrative interstitial of Child Him and a Peter Pan comes down from the ceiling to give him this psychedelic trip into, I guess, guess the future of what his life would become and then Drake comes out again and this is where he plays a lot of like the hard hitting jump out of your seats high energy songs during the entire show the floor of the stage is doing really cool LED things but also the lights around the arena are also doing that but what's cool about this second section is that Drake has this vest on with the Nike logo and the Nike logo actually lights up in coordination with the stage and the lights and there are some times where there's so much smoke on the stage all you can see is like a vague outline of Drake and then this bright Nike logo poking through and it provides provided some really cool shots. There's this massive jumbotron that is showing really cinematic shots of the performance. This would be a good time to talk about my seats. I was way up in the nosebleeds, like literally the cheapest seats in the house. And at least for this arena, I could see everything perfectly well. There was no bad seat in the house. So I could have an entertaining time looking at Drake, but then I could also look up at this jumbotron and get these really cool cinematic shots as well. And it was really cool just to be able to glance back and forth without like really having to shift my vision around. Drake takes some pauses and breaks to talk to the audience tell some stories. And then he went off to the DJ booth, which was off to the side. This transitioned into part three. Part three of the show was the house segment. What he did was he took a lot of the older songs that have like house, dance hall, and similar type of vibes and sounds. The DJ remixed those into more like club, high energy, like kind of house beats. It sounded really good. And the thing I love about live shows is hearing a song that you know really well in a different way. Drake did this throughout the show because most of the he was not using a vocal backing track. He was actually singing it. There were some sections where he was using a vocalized backing track, but those were the times that he was trying to do like more crowd engagements and wanted people to be able to easily follow along. I think for a concert setting, remixing these songs into a more clubified version of them played really well for a live show. And then this pretty smoothly transitioned him into songs off of Honestly Nevermind. He went back to the stage for these songs. There was this laser light show. And as someone who really enjoyed that project, I'm glad that he gave it its time. In fact, he played something off of every single project he's ever released with the exception of I think Darkling demo tapes including Care Package which provided my favorite deep cut of the entire show. I would have loved if he had thrown one song on from Darkling demo tapes. I think Chicago Freestyle would fit well in one particular spot that I'm thinking of, just so we could have had the whole catalog represented. After the house segment, we move into our fourth and final segment of the show. This is where 21 Savage comes out. He plays about 20 minutes of his own songs. Then Drake comes back out, joins him, and they play about 20 minutes together, and they do pretty much every song that they have together, which also structurally just makes a lot of sense. With Her Loss being the most recent album, you'd want to end with those newer songs prominently featured at the end. 21 Savage leaves, and Drake closes out with one more song just by himself. Gives a heartwarming 
performing goodbye and the show ends. The whole thing was incredibly put together. I think it's a challenge to package an entire career like Drake's into a two hour show. And not only did this do it so well, but like I said, I walked in a massive Drake fan and I left somehow a bigger Drake fan. I just keep wanting to go back and relive that night over and over again. I wish I could go see it again. It was such an incredible experience. I had such high expectations going into this and they were met in every capacity. 